there are six right. really great coaching questions that all of you out there as sales leaders need to be asking your team and supporting them on a regular basis. And these are six of my favorite questions. I try to use them as much as I can, Marshall. This is a great reminder for me as much as the audience. So back over to you. If you can talk us through these six questions, that would be great. During periods of rapid change, your salespeople need more structure, not less. They need more structure, not less when times change. They need more communication. They need more support, not less. Now, how does this work? As a sales leader, as a small business owner, what you do is you have a regular dialogue with everyone you manage on six basic questions. And you say, you know, we're going to have a regular dialogue. I want to make sure I communicate these very clearly. Question number one is, where are we going? That's more of the bigger picture question. Where are we going as a larger organization? And then you ask the person a question, where do you think we should be going? So again, a dialogue. Here's what I think. What do you think? Question one ties into question two. Mm. Where are you going? Mm. Where, where, and I'd say, here's where I see your important priorities. Here's where I see you and your part of the business going. Then you ask, where do you think you should be going? It's important to have a dialogue for two reasons. One, you want to connect what you think as a sales leader with what they think. Your priorities need to be connected to their priorities. Number two, you want to look at the bigger picture of the organization that you lead and talk about the smaller unit that they're in charge of. And the two need to be connected. So that's why this is a dialogue. It's not a dictate. Here's what I think. What do you think? Mm. Now, so that's the first two questions. So you're trying to get Question number three is right? doing well. Alignment. The whole thing is about alignment. Question number three is doing well. I'd say, here's what I see you and your part of the business is doing very well. And then ask a question. What do you think you're doing well? See, a very good question. They may come up with things that you as a manager never thought of. And say, you know, that's great. I didn't recognize it. Your team put in a wonderful effort. I should recognize them. So ask a question. What are you proud of? What do you think you're doing well? That's very motivational as well. Mm. Then question number four is, as you know, I'm bigger on feed forward than feedback. Right, right. Question number four is suggestions for the future. Rather than saying, let's talk about what you did wrong in the past, say, moving forward, here's some suggestions. I think it might help things be, be even better in the future. And then ask the person a great coaching question. If you were the coach for you, what ideas might you have for yourself? If you were the coach for you, what ideas might you have? Now, one of my good coaching clients is George Borst. George was CEO of Toyota Financial Services. George was skeptical about this question number four, that question about if you were the coach for you, what ideas would you have? He thought people would say fluff, you know, like I work hard and I'm dedicated and all that. No, he was very surprised. He said more than half the time that their ideas were better than his ideas. And he would end up saying, look, forget my ideas. I like yours better. <laughs> so that's question number four. Question number five is a great question for the leader to ask, how can I help? How can I help you? And then question six, I want to do better too. Moving forward, what ideas and suggestions do you have for me? Six basic questions. One, where are we going? Two, where are you going? Three, doing well. Four, suggestions for the future. Five, how can I help? And six, what suggestions do you have for me? And Tom, I'll send you an article about this that you can share with your, with your uh, colleagues. Now, here's the key to make this work, though. Mm. The key to make this work is called mutual responsibility. Mutual responsibility. You see, too much of engagement and leadership is taught as if it's all about the leader with no responsibility to the people being led. I don't believe that. I'm a great believer in the concept of mutual responsibility. Now, let's imagine, Tom, that I'm your sales manager. Mm. I would say, Tom, I'm going to go through these six basic questions with you on an as-needed basis. And one thing I want to assure you during times of rapid change, these may change. Where are we going today? I'm going to give you an answer that six months from today, I can't say it's going to be the same. Right. I'm we not sure I can say change, six weeks so. from today yeah. it's going to be the same. <laughs> There's a lot of change out there. On the other hand, at any one second in time, I want you to have total clarity as to these questions. I want you to have clarity. Now, if at any time you feel overcommitted, confused, ambiguity, you're not sure, I want you, Tom, to take the responsibility to talk to me. Yeah. Because if I do my job on a regular basis and you assume responsibility as well, there's no reason we'd have any alignment problem. Right. And back to my analogy of the golfer. 
Mm. At any second in time, the salesperson needs to hit the ball in front of them. They need to be able to block out the past. They need to have that clarity, have the strategy, hit the ball in front of them and block out all that other stuff. Don't worry about winning the Super Bowl here. Just hit the ball in front of you. If you want to take your sales skills to the next level and learn how to master the entire sales process, join Soko Academy and get certified in Soko Selling. The link is in the notes.